again! It's Aura Cosplay! Last time I left you, I had done some stuff with my Zenobra armor, and that left a lot of people asking questions. What is this magical stuff you're making it out of? I want to use it! So, um, I'm going to give you an introduction into using Warbler today. Uh, and also I'm going to show you how far I've come along with my breastplate, which is still the only thing I've done. It's slow going. I'm just going to put it on show you quick that I've put some details on um, and I've still got quite a few detail bits to do until it's completely finished but it stays on without any strapping but it will have strapping because it's gonna fall off at one point so yeah that's cool but this is not what I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about this this is warbler it comes in gigantic sheets smaller sheets a4 sheets um, I got mine off coscraft.co.uk and uh, they're pretty good, I think they ship internationally so you can check them out because I highly recommend them they ship really quickly if you're in the UK so which is cool but they sell out really quick because it's really popular okay so what do you need to work with Warbler so without the Warbler itself you are going to need a heat gun because it's thermoplastic so you have to heat it up before you can start moulding it this is a heat gun, it's not a hairdryer, so I'm going to get really serious for a second, this is really dangerous, it heats up ridiculously hot, so the first setting is 350 degrees celsius, the second setting is 550 degrees celsius, the tip of it is metal so obviously it's going to be burning hot, don't touch it, don't put it on any surfaces because it will burn the surfaces, I put mine on the carpet, <laughs> burnt the carpet, um, so yeah, really important safety tip, don't use a hairdryer because you'll be there for about a million years trying to heat it up because it heats up at quite high temperature, which is why you need to use a heat gun. Heat guns are dangerous, remember that. So obviously when you're heating up the warbler with this, the warbler will get hot. Um, I will show you how you can tell when to touch the hot warbler, um, how you know you've burnt the warbler because that does happen to. Um, and basically just stay safe with this it's I know it's really serious but it gets ridiculously hot um, you can get them off Amazon um, I got mine for £17.99 so they're pretty cheap came with a bunch of different nozzles and a carry case not that I've ever used the nozzles but the carry case is really handy another thing you will probably need to use when using warbler is tin foil so I use just regular basic household tin foil um, this is just to cover surfaces that you're going to heat up with the warbler because obviously the surface is going to get hot if you put the warbler on a surface and then heat up with a heat gun just put the shiniest side up to cover whatever surface so you don't burn anything, set fires in anything because that can happen so yeah just as a little insert this is how I've set up my surface so I've got my um, tin foil here if you're working on carpet you're going to need something underneath that, some cardboard or something just to protect it. Um, if you're working on a harder surface you'll be okay. Quick safety tip again with the heat gun it does get very hot. Never hold it too close to the surface, never keep it in one place. Always keep it moving when you're heating and you'll see me doing that later. So now I'm going to show you a few things um, on how to actually use Warbler. So I've been working on some details of my armour here, which is sort of this horn detail underneath what would be the sort of breast cup, lol. <laughs> um, so yeah, I know a lot of you want to know how to do the whole shebang of just show me how to make the armour. Well first you need to take baby steps and learn how to use this stuff first. So here is like a pattern that I cut out earlier, um, it's sort of my base pattern. So with Warbler you've got this sort of rough side, um, which is the top side, and then on the bottom you've got this very shiny side, if you can see it there, um, which sort of acts like a glue, so you can glue bits together. So that's cool. So I'm going to be wrapping um, half bits of these, this is the big bit that goes on the end, um, around this, which to make the horn. Um, this is literally just regular craft foam wrapped in sort of just 
in a spiral that's what I wanted to say so yeah this is just wrapped in a spiral around another bit of craft foam which has been taped so you can use like anything you want I literally it took me a day to figure out how to do this horn stuff so so you get it for free without the the hard work and pulling your hair out <laughs> so okay so I've got my excuse the shininess but I am actually working on the carpet so and I don't want to burn the carpet so you will need scissors to cut this out this is why I have this and I've got my trusty heat gun which I've not named but I think I should name him Larry for no reason whatsoever so yeah here's my bigger bit so I've literally just drawn on sketched the primary pattern that I had which is this um with a sharpie straight onto the warbler which is completely fine as you probably saw in my armor there is sharpie marks all over the place so I'm literally just going to cut it out this is probably really awkward and I might just cut out the, this bit right so I cut out my bit from the main sheet of warbler which you can do completely fine with normal scissors um, why didn't I use, use this bit? Because I've been using this as a pattern for ages. <laughs> so I'm not reusing that. So this part here, I'm going to heat up. I'm going to rest it and put it in frame. Doo, doo, doo. This is really difficult because I'm really not looking at this from the greatest angle in the world. It's so awkward. So yeah, I'm literally going to, as you would use a hairdryer, this is not a hairdryer, remember it's really, really hot. You're just going to heat up. You don't have to do it for very long, especially if you use the highest setting, um, because I didn't use it for so long. See, now it's completely moldable and pliable compared to what it was before so yeah sorry I'm sniffing I've got a runny nose for some reason how gross um, so yeah I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more because it's still not pliable enough for me to work with at the moment it's still um, I can still touch it it's not too hot so I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more it's pretty workable with it's kind of hot to touch so I need to touch it quite fast and I'm just going to put it on the end here wrap it around I think I'm going to have to ah, you'd have to work quite quick especially if you don't heat it up that much because it will start to heat uh, cool down not heat up I'm just wrapping this as quick as I can and I need to cut a bit off. It's completely fine to cut bits off as it's warm. It's actually kind of easier to cut that way, especially when you're making things. This is gonna look really terrible because I can't really see, but it's just an example that I'm doing for you. Probably won't turn out to be my real bit. Or maybe it will, depends. So at the moment, yeah, there's still bits that are just a bit rough around the edges. So you can just cut those off and do whatever you want so this doesn't look very comprehensible right now but when it's done you will understand so yeah that's the uh, beginning bit so when you're working with things that sort of go in sequence and overlap you want to start with the last bit and finish with the first bit so you're kind of working a bit backwards so yeah it looks a bit terrible right now but it should turn out to be what you saw earlier I'm working more so that's just the basis of how to work with warbler i'm going to show you some things not to do with warbler so there's going to don't ever heat it directly onto your hand because it will get really hot this is why you're constantly using a surface uh don't eat, heat it up too much because i don't know if you'll be able to see it i will heat it up too much and show you what happens to the warbler it'll start going white and that's when you sort of burnt the warbler and it'll get too hot to touch and you really don't want to do that. So I'm going to heat up and show you what not to do. So 
you probably can't see that. I'm going to try and focus it on it. That's not focusing on it. <laughs> okay, so it's gone really, really hot. Like, I can't touch it. It's so melted right now that it's just pulling apart when I try to pick it up. It's just... See? That's what not to do with it. You don't want to heat, put the heat gun. You don't want to put it ridiculously close. And now I can't even get it off the tin foil. Oh, yes, I can. So, yeah, it's completely just broken up and, like... Just don't do this. Don't overheat your warbler. Go very slowly and in stages and keep the heat gun quite far away from it. Otherwise you just end up with a total mess and it's just gross. So you don't want that. So yeah, you'll know when you've heated the warbler too much when it starts going white so you'll need to go slowly on heating it up and then once you've got it in your hands you kind of want to work a little bit quicker just so it doesn't cool down but it's totally okay to sort of heat it see I've done this earlier and it's gone a bit weird but it's perfectly fine to actually heat it up on whatever you need So, and because it's foam, you've got to remember that's the thermoplastic too, so it's going to start. So I'm just going to mould this up a little bit to cover this gap that I've created, like a silly, silly. <laughs> so it's completely fine and it looks a bit rubbish because I can't, I'm looking through a camera, but this is just an example view. So yeah, it's totally fine to heat it on other stuff. So I've been heating the um, breastplate directly, you know, on things, which is, right, directly completed. That doesn't even make sense. But as long as you keep your fingers away from whatever the, whatever's getting hot, that's totally fine. like it's completely moldable and it will stick to itself as well I'll show you an example of that in a minute and you can kind of stretch it as well if you need to but I don't actually recommend stretching it too much because if that happens then you will start tearing it because it becomes quite um, really flexible so you'll tear it too much and then do it like that. So when I've done more of this, I can actually heat this up. You can actually heat this up and start to bend it where you need to. And because the the foam that I'm using underneath like that will change shape once you heat it so I can do that instead of it being straight and it will stay in that position until I heat it up again which is quite cool and that's how I got the curves done so I literally didn't pre-plan the curves I just put all the scaly horny bits in horny bits <laughs> I put the scaly bits in and then bent it to the shape and I bent it on the actual breastplate too so if I pull that in let's move the heat gun out of the way it's in the way right now I pull the breastplate in so I can actually bend it to its form it's still uh, relatively pliable right now because it's still kind of warm so if I do that and keep it there it will start to just keep its shape when it cools down which is quite cool. So yeah, that's how we got it. And then when you actually come to need to stick it on, because this is so sticky and it sticks to itself, you literally, I literally just pressed it onto the breastplate and it's stuck right on. Um, you give it a firm push, but not so firm that you uh, sort of deform the shape you've already created. So I'm going to show you something I was talking about in my last video, which was like the three components of making the armour, 
which I didn't really explain that well. So it's a piece of warbler, a piece of craft foam, and then a piece of warbler on the top, sort of mashed together. And that will get you some thick and sturdy armour without using ridiculous amounts of material. Um, so you've got the two sides. One side is the sticky side. And then you've got the rough side on the other side. You want the sticky side up. Let's just check it's tacky enough. Just place the a bit of craft foam should just stick to it, which it will. Then peel it off the. There we go. So you've got the rough side, which is looking shiny because it's been flattened by the um, the form, not the foam. What am I talking about? The foil. <laughs> So yeah, that's totally stuck on. You can peel this off, so it's not when it's dry, at least. I've done it. So you can sort of, if you make a mistake, it's pretty easy to fix, which is nice. So now you've got this bit, you cover it, heat this bit up. hot enough and we'll just peel that off and stick it on top to show you if it was the right size. Now I can just stick it on. It's a little bit warm so I'm gonna work with it really quickly. Where there we go. So now I've got a nice little kind of cute little packet right now. Just pinch the edges together. then it's nice and concealed. And leave that to cool down for a bit and then when it's cooled down you can just trim off the edges and then you'll have just your piece of armour which is quite cool. That's cold enough. Let me get my scissors here. This is like art attack. If you're not English you don't know what that is. Now I've trimmed off the excess. I've got a cool bit of... Oh, it looks really tasty. <laughs> so that's my bit of armour. So yeah, that's it for my introduction on how to warbler. Hope you enjoyed it. I should have a video coming up at, in the future at some point on how to finish a piece of armour. It won't be a breastplate, so I've already done that. It'll be a simpler piece, but I'll go through the details um, with that with you and yeah you can follow me on twitter at aurora360 you can like my facebook page facebook.com forward slash aurora cosplays and the links are in the description for all the stuff i've talked about so far so yeah see you later